Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Superman and Lois Season 1 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 13, Fail Safe, which I have just finished watching. And once again, another top-notch episode from what has been a fantastic first season for Superman and Lois. And every episode continues to keep getting better and better and i don't think i've ever seen one bad episode not even an episode that i would deem weak or average every episode has just been well made well written well produced everything about it from the dialogue to the music everything about it's just been fantastic and this episode was just really epic and we are now two episodes away from season one officially wrapping up and i'm not ready for this ride to end just yet i want more because this for me has been quite possibly the best show in the entire arrowverse above legends of tomorrow above the flash above supergirl above batwoman above everything superman and lois has been the best show ever produced for dc slash cw and it doesn't feel like a cw show i've said that countless times this doesn't feel like a cw show this show feels like it could have been from hbo max because the budget for this is just incredible so i'm going to give a quick recap of what's happened so far then we're just going to get straight into it so as we all remember superman was kind of corrupted by morgan edge to join his side in rebuilding krypton but thanks to John Henry Irons, he was able to help bring Superman back to being his old self again. So now it looks like Henry Irons and Superman are on the same page, which is brilliant stuff for anyone who's read the classic Superman comics from the 90s. Seeing Steel and Superman working side by side is just a dream come true for me. And we saw edge take the eradicator into outer space and it looks like he's destroyed it or he's done something to it and the last shot we saw at the end of episode 12 was we saw morgan edge sitting in a kryptonite holding cell sitting there grinning and looking very evil so that's how we ended episode 12 and what a cliffhanger so this pretty much picks up where we left off at the end of episode 12 and as i mentioned already this episode was absolutely brilliant and the ending we'll get to that in a minute but the ending was just mind-blowing so with that all said let's get straight into it let's talk about episode 13 fail safe so this episode opens with Tauro talking to his father's hologram being berated and abused in order to prove he's the one and then we see Superman in the presence interrogating him at the DOD asking him where the Eradicator and Leslie Lar have gone. Tar won't say or doesn't know and hints that all he hears is what's in his mind. After a short back and forth exchange Superman tells Tau that he if he won't show him where La is, he'll find her himself, and after that, they will never see each other again. As for Kent's home, the boys try to skip out on school, where there will be an assembly to give the official line on what's happened with Morgan Edge, but Lois and Clark are not sold. At the Cushions house, the mayor is telling Kyle and Lana that he is working to take some of the heat in the community off Kyle, but he needs time. At school, Sarah and Jordan sneak out of the assembly while the football team tries to pump Jonathan for answers as to what the DOD is up to. The pretty girl who Jonathan asked out before has his eye on him and walks up to him and offers to run out of the school with him too. As for newspaper, Chrissy and Lois are trying to figure out what they're going to write about the situation and Chrissy puts pressure on Lois to get her father to make a statement. As for Kent's farm, Clark brings John Henry breakfast. Clark tries to encourage him to go work at the DOD given his sophisticated system to track Kryptonians but John Henry says he thinks he'll be moving on once they have found Lyle. As Clark turns to go, the system pops to life. La is about to attack the DOD and we see Clark change to Superman and John Henry suits up in his armour. Brilliant. Love it. Just before he can hit the DOD, Superman takes La out of the sky and then John Henry blasts her with a red sun weapon knocking her out. Back in the office, Sam says he wants to take the kryptonite and all the kryptonite weapons and sink them to the bottom of the ocean. Sam promises Clark that he, Lois, and the boys will be safe. 
Driving around with the girl he's crushing on, John finds her to be pretty nosy. Meanwhile, John, Jordan and Sarah are walking through the woods together. In the local diner, one of the firefighters comes in and Kyle goes to say hello. Three of Kyle's team are at a table together, but they all blame him for one of Edge's Kryptonians starting a fire that nearly killed one of them. At the DOD, Lois is angry that her father isn't issuing a statement. She is trying to talk to him into giving a full and honest statement, but he doesn't think the town of the world will be safe if he acknowledges anything significant of what just happened. We then see another flashback. Talro thinks he's ready to go out in the world, but his father tells him to hide out until the Eradicator arrives and they can begin their plan. As for DOD, Ryle tries to convince Superman that he should side with the Kryptonians, telling him that he knows how he has to control himself every second so that he doesn't kill everyone around him, and asks him if it felt good to lose that control when Zod was in his mind. Superman just quietly walks off. Yeah, you can clearly see this is weighing on Superman because he's always been scared of the idea that he could lose control one day, so I'm really glad this played into this episode. As for paper, Chrissy is angry that Sam didn't give a public statement and tries to corner Lois into telling her more, but when Lois won't, she accuses Lois of lying to cover for the DoD and tells her to leave. Parked by a pond, Tegan starts pressing John for information. He figures out that she doesn't care about him, only wants to be popular for extracting information from him for gossip, and he leaves to walk home. Yeah, I don't blame him. Silly girl. As for Cushion House, Kyle is getting increasingly angry that the town he lives for has more or less disowned him for his support of Edge and suggests maybe it's time to move on. On the bridge over the pond, we see Jordan and Sarah having a moment when they're stopped by a police officer for trespassing. As for DOD, Sam is walking Superman through the 7734 armory and Superman tells him he disagrees with the idea of getting rid of the weapons and says that he should keep them all in the likelihood that Superman should ever turn rogue again. Nice. In the Kent's barn, John Henry is talking with his computer when Jonathan comes in to talk. John Henry starts talking to him before Clark comes in to ask why Jonathan isn't in school. In the town square, Sam calls Lois to say he's worried about Clark. As for Cushion House, Lana is worried about Kyle, who's looking desperately for work out of town. She gets a phone call that Sarah and Jordan have been arrested. Back at the Kent farm, Clark is talking to John about skipping class when Lois comes home very angry at Clark for telling Sam to keep 7734 going. He tells her that the world deserves the means to defend himself from the only thing that he can't defend them from, that's himself. Lois then gets the call to bail Jordan out of jail and drives off very angrily. After Lois and Lana pick up the kids from the police station, Lana overhears the mayor telling one of the cops that the whole Edge thing was Kyle's idea. She blows up at him for lying and Lois pulls her aside to try and encourage her. After Lois gets home, she sends Jordan to his room and goes to talk to Clark about 7734. She tells him that he's wrong, but Clark is convinced that they need a plan. He echoes Ryle's comments about how good it felt to let go and not being able to hold back with his powers, and explains that he thinks there needs to be at least some acknowledgement of the possibility that he's corruptible. Lois finally relents and says that there's no way she's trusting the DoD with such technology. In the barn, Clark pitches the idea to John Henry Irons, who says he'll call Sam. As for paper, Lois brings Chrissy a statement that's mostly true and apologises to Chrissy. In another flashback, we see Raoul has a confrontation with his hologram father, saying that when he finds the Eradicator, he will recruit Superman to help him. He says that he won't do things his father's way, and disconnects the hologram and tosses the crystal aside. We then cut to the present in his soul. Raoul rubs his temples, hearing voices in his head. He says, your way is the only way, goodbye father, and closes his eyes, and when he opens them, they glow blue. Oh boy. Back at the farmhouse, Lois and Clark are yelling at the kids for skipping school. The kids go to bed and Clark and Lois kiss and wake up. As for DOD, Rose stands up and blows the glass out of his cell. His vital signs are gone, but that doesn't stop him from simply walking out, injuring a number of soldiers as he does and flies away before Superman can get there. Superman arrives, then flies to the atmosphere to search for planets for Rose. 
When he can't find him, he returns for DOD, but Ro is near the sun, absorbing as much yellow sun radiation as possible, and he hears his father's voice echoing in his ears, become the Eradicator. And that's how we end episode 13. As I said, another top-notch episode. Really enjoyed this one a lot, and it looks like to me Morgan Edge is going to become the Eradicator. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Seeing Steel and Superman working together really brought out the inner geek in me. I just loved this episode. I thought this was absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of episode 13? Did you enjoy it? What was your thoughts on Superman and John Henry Irons working together? Do you think we'll see more of this? And what's your thoughts on Morgan Edge possibly becoming the Eradicator? Do you think... We'll see more of this in the next episode. And also, now that Morgan Edge has absorbed more yellow sun radiation, does that make him more powerful than Superman? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Superman and Lois Season 1 review series, where I am going to be talking about Episode 14, which I am very much looking forward to talking about, especially with the way this episode ended. Should be a good one. So until next time, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, thanks for listening.